Hi there. Uh, this is going to be the last video um, in the books and movies series that I had. Um, I don't really plan on getting a lot of DVDs in the future, um, cutting down DVD buying. Uh, books, I'll, I'll keep buying those and I'll be return to the Sleaze Library um, series that I uh, basically quit to do this to combine the movies and books. So this is going to be the last video in this style. Uh, I have to see what future videos of the uh, Sleaze Library will be like. Uh, I'm not going to show any more DVDs at all. Um, thinking about selling most of my collection, not all. The movies I really love I'm not going to sell, but the movies that I think are okay or just nice I'm not gonna keep getting rid of a lot of you know stuff in my house um, it's a little crowded <laughs> anyway I did pick up some DVDs some blu-rays and a bunch of books so I'm gonna show these um, yeah they're fun I guess first up is music bank the videos, <coughs> sorry, the videos of Alice in Chains. It's what it says. These are the videos of Alice in Chains. Uh, this is released, I guess, in 2000, 2000, 2001. So everything before that is on here. Um, some really nice videos that I never ever had seen before. So. This is a nice find. I like Alice in Chains. I, I grew up on, on grunge and stuff like that, so this is a nice DVD. Picked up The Princess Blade as well. This is a Japanese action adventure film that is not that good. Uh, I watched it, um, even though it's got a 16 certificate. In Holland, mostly that means pretty, you know, just violent and bloody and um, things that could be NC-17 in, in the U.S. <coughs> this uh, probably would be, uh, I don't know, a really low rating in the U.S. Because, I mean, it's, it's action-filled, but not really that violent. Uh, not really that Japanese either. I don't know. Um, it's by the guy who uh, directed Blade 2, <coughs> the uh, Wesley Snipes film. Uh, it's, it's visually okay, but overall pretty boring. Not really my cup of tea. This one was even worse. Um, Bodyguard Kiba. It's another Japanese uh, uh, film um, directed by a guy called Miki Takashi who is a uh, guy who directs a lot of films. Again, 16. The rating is 16. Uh, this time, yeah, it's pretty violent, it's sexist, it's silly. But not really as silly as the stuff he would do later. Um, interesting film, I guess, but overall not good at all. Um, Bodyguard Kiba. This I liked, which is kind of weird, because I'm not a big fan of blockbusters, but Wanted, starring Angelina Jolie and Morgan Freeman. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, visually over the top, pre-violent, uh, based on a uh, comic book or a graphic novel. Um, I like this. Apparently they're working on a second movie. It was fun. I really, really enjoyed this. From the same guy who directed the Wanted film, I picked up Daywatch. Um, uh, the guy is a Russian. And this is a Russian um, film in a series. It's the second part. I don't have the first part, so I'm not going to watch this yet. Um, I want to see both parts in a row. The other one's called Nightwatch. Um, it's about vampires, I believe, and it's over the top action. and crazy special effects so really looking forward to this 
picked up the shape of things to come, <clears throat> starring Jack Palance and people I don't really know. Um, apparently, it's a Canadian science fiction film uh, based on an H.G. Wells story. Um, pretty chaotic, um, not really that interesting. Had a robot who could, you know, jump from one point in a room to the other. It's it's silly, but not not really uh, not really that much fun. Um, kind of reminded me of Battlestar Galactica at times, except the bad guys they weren't cool. So Shape of Things to Come, and I still need to watch this one. This is Phantoms of the Paradise by Brian De Palma. Uh, which is a reworking of Phantom of the Opera for the, I don't know, maybe glam rock age. Uh, it's released in 1970, 70 something, I don't know, 74. So it's, it's maybe kind of a progressive Phantom of the Opera. Uh, it's visually very um, interesting, at least the pictures on the back and inside. Um, so yeah, I'm going to watch this and hopefully it's going to be fun. And the last DVD I picked up is this animated Japanese animated film called Jinro, uh, The Wolf Brigade. It's by the same, as it says, the creators of Ghost in a Shell and Akira. Probably the production company who did, who did those movies. Uh, I know I once saw this, but I don't remember anything from it. Um, science fiction based story. Um, not really. It's science fiction, kind of, but it takes place in the 60s. So it's a alternate reality, alternate past, uh, which is really interesting. So those are the DVDs, and I got three Blu-rays. This is uh, La Cita de la Donna, uh, City of Women, uh, Federico Fellini. It's a Blu-ray on Masters of Cinema. Uh, surreal. It doesn't say anything. It's just information on the back. Uh, surreal, a uh, film from the 80s about women, about Women. <laughs> That's it. Starts uh, Marcello Mastroianni, um, and I know I saw this years and years ago, but I don't know anything about it except what I just mentioned. Also, the Blue Angel on Masters of Cinema. This is a 1930, 1930 film from Germany, um, directed. By Joseph von Sternberg, starring um, Marlena Dietrich. It's a uh, talkie, so it's an early uh, talkie from 1930. Um, again, have seen this years and years ago, but don't know much about it. I can read from the back what it's about, but it's a classic um, of German cinema, I guess. And last Blu ray is a French. A dark comedy called La Poisson, uh, directed by Sasha Guitry. Um, this was a movie that, I mean, I picked up, had the idea I'm going to pick up everything by Masters of Cinema. And this is a movie that I'm not really that interested in, actually. But I did pick it up. And it's also probably the last of these types of Masters of Cinema titles that I'm going to pick up. Um, just going to focus more on stuff I really want instead of everything. So this is a dark comedy about this guy who wants to kill his wife because she's kind of obnoxious, I guess. Um, but this is from 1951. Um, apparently highly influential on the French New Wave scene, but I don't know. We'll see. Those were the movies. Now on to the books. Uh, this is I Spied for Stalin by Nora Murray. It's titles like this that makes me want to, you know, pick up these paperbacks. Um, obviously a, uh, 
uh, Cold War propaganda novel. Because um, I don't even think the person who wrote it actually was a Russian war bride. As it says there, Russian war bride's dramatic life story. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in reading this. It looks like a, a blast. Picked up some classic novels. This is Animal Farm by George Orwell. Love the cover of this one. Um, don't think I need to say too much about this. Most of you who read books have either read this or know about it. It's sort of a... Uh, um, Parable, is that it? I think that's the word, of uh, human life portrayed by animals. Um, the Second World War was an influence, in, influence on this novel, um, and the pigs are taking over the farm. So, George Orwell. There's another classic, Albert Camus. Or Camus, The Outsider. Uh, this was on my uh, wish list to read. And I always looked out for a Dutch copy, but then I found a uh, British copy on Penguin Books. And I really enjoy Albert Camus's writing style. He's a, a classic French author. Um, Writing about life and death, and it's pretty pretty tough uh, material. Picked up this science fiction novel, The Gods Themselves, by Isaac Asimov, from 1972, I believe. Um, yeah, the cover is again really cool. Typically of the 70s science fiction novels, but had to pick this up. Those were the older uh, books. Now I got some newer stuff on newer. Uh, this is Nick Hornby's How to Be Good. Um, most of you guys know this writer for High Fidelity, the uh, book on um, record collectors and you know lists, mu music lists. This is uh, another novel he wrote which I have not read yet, but I really enjoy his style, his writing style. How to Be Good by Nick Hornby. This was a, a really cool find, Persepolis by Marianne Satrapi. Uh, it's not a book, this is a graphic novel. And you hardly ever find graphic novels. Uh, at a goodwill. Uh, this one was, I guess, 50 cents or so. I, I don't remember anymore. But um, a movie had been made about this in the same uh, graphic style, uh, an animated film, which I really enjoyed. Uh, for those who don't know this story, it's about a young woman who moved from um, Persia which is now Iran, if I'm correct, um, after the fall of the Shah um, and the Iranian regime, regime um, started, they moved to France and the whole backstory of how things happened and what things are like in early um, Iranian times, or I, I don't know. Um, but... <laughs> It's it's hard hitting, it's confrontational, and it's honest. So I'm really looking forward to read the graphic novel. Also picked up the Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Soot by David Mitchell, who's uh, best known, I guess, right now for writing Cloud Atlas. Um, this is his, I think it's his last novel that he released. Yeah, it's from 2010, and it's, I, I haven't read it, I mean, it's pretty thick, but it's less 
uh, how shall I say it, less uh, complex, since this is basically one story, if I'm not mistaken, um, about a Dutch clerk who goes to 18th century Japan, falls in love with a woman, and uh, things happen, I guess. Um, yeah, looks interesting, uh, especially since it's about a Dutch guy, <laughs> written by an American living in Japan. That's pretty cool. So I had to pick this up. Also picked up uh, Fast Food Nation, which is a book by Eric Schlosser. Eric Schlosser. Uh, and it's about uh, how fast food companies deal and what fast food does to you, I guess. Um, it has been turned into a movie, but I didn't like the movie. Uh, and this is a non-fiction one, so how they make a uh, fictional film about a non-fiction book. Hmm. But yeah, the novel I'm really, really interested in. Also picked up this really thick book compared to, let's say, The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Soot. As you can see, that's a big, big book, and it's Stephen King's The Stand. Probably the biggest book I have. I, I don't really like reading big novels, but this is like 1,300-something pages. Um, but I really loved the cover. And Stephen King is a writer I really want to get into. So I might continue picking up his novels. We'll see. Um, but yeah, this looked pretty damn cool. And the last is another graphic novel, I guess. I, I don't really know. Uh, in Holland, we call this simply comic books, but comic books in America are very different from comic books in Europe. Um, comic books in Europe are not strictly Batman and Superman and stuff like that. It's pretty graphic, uh, adult-based comic books. And this is a hardback cover of a novel or a graphic novel called Exterminator 17 by a uh, guy from, I think he's from Belgrade, so that's Belgrade. It's Hungary? Uh, at least it's um, Eastern Europe. He lives in France and his, guy, his name is Enki Bilal. As you can see Oop, there, Enki Bilal. Uh, the guy's Drawing style reminds me of Mobius. Um, but yeah, it's it's wonderfully detailed, um, pretty complex storytelling. And this is stuff you hardly ever find at Goodwill. And I literally mean you hardly ever find this. Comic book stuff, what you find is basically Tintin, which is cool. I like Tintin, but that's not really what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. So this was a great, great find. Exterminator 17 uh, by Enki Bilal. So this might be, together with Persepolis and... Uh, what else? I don't know. The, the Persepolis and this are bookwise my high points. Anyway, um, future videos will be different. Like I said, uh, the DVD part will be gone. Um, I will continue showing books because books are, I think, a lot more fun at the moment to me uh, than films. Anyway, take care. It's 19 minutes. I'm going to stop here. Bye bye.